In this video, we're going to learn how to use the rest of the geologic time scale on pages 8 and 9 of the Earth Science Reference Table. If you remember, pages 8 and 9 of the Earth Science Reference Table are meant to work together. We already learned how to read and interpret information using page 8. Now we're going to learn how to use page 9 and ultimately how to use these two diagrams together. We're first going to focus on the time distribution of fossil column on page 9 of the reference table. So let's start by taking a closer look. Within this specific part of the reference table, there are two things that we need to focus on. And we're going to use this first example of trilobites to see how everything works. So if we zoom in a little bit closer, we're going to notice that there's two components that we need to understand. The first is you have a gray bar which represents a specific fossil group. In this case, the fossil group is named trilobites. Now, each fossil group has specific individual fossils that make up that group, and that's represented by letters A, B, and C here. So these letters represent specific index fossils that are part of the overall trilobite fossil group. At the bottom of pages 8 and 9, you're going to see a variety of index fossils, each represented by a different letter. Each index fossil also has a name and an image to go along with it. So if we take a closer look at the fossils that represent the trilobite group, those are fossils A, B, and C. And specifically, we have Elliptocephala, Cryptolithus, and FACOPS. Those three fossils, A, B, and C, are individual members of the overall trilobite fossil group. We can also get a lot of other information from this column. The length of the bar for each fossil group represents the amount of time that that specific group existed on Earth. So very simply put, the longer the bar, the longer the period of time. So the two that I have highlighted here, gastropods and brachiopods, existed far into Earth's past and still exist today. They have the longest bar, which means they've been around for the longest period of time. On the other hand, the fossil group placoderm fish has been around for the shortest amount of time, which we can determine that because the length of its bar is really short. We can also get information about when a specific fossil group went extinct. The top of a bar represents the extinction of fossil groups. When the top of the bar does not get to the top of the chart near present day, that's how we can tell a specific fossil group is extinct. In this case, trilobites, ammonoids, dinosaurs, graptolites, eurypids, and placoderm fish have all gone extinct because the top of their fossil group bar does not extend to present day. On the other hand, all of these other fossil groups that I just highlighted in purple are still in existence present day. They have not yet gone extinct because their fossil group bar extends to present day. So let's look at some example questions here. The first is, in which geologic time period were condors abundant? So this takes some time searching around the reference table, but you'll eventually learn that condor is a specific index fossil, and it is fossil S, which can be found at the bottom of page 9. You next have to find where fossil S exists within the chart, and fossil S is really close to present day, near the top of the chart. Once you locate where fossil S is, you take that spot in the chart, bring it over to the period column, and you'll see that it's part of the quaternary period. Another example question, how long ago did trilobites leave the fossil record? Trilobites is a group of fossils, so if we find the trilobite fossil group bar, you'll notice that it suddenly stops. At the point at the top of the bar where it stops, that's when trilobites went extinct and left the fossil record. You bring that over to the time scale, and you'll see that that was 251 million years ago. Question three. 
In which epoch and period did the fossil Cooksonia exist? Cooksonia is a specific index fossil which can be found on the bottom of page 9. Cooksonia specifically is fossil P. Once you locate fossil P in the chart, you bring that over to the period column and you'll see that the epoch is late, the period is Silurian, so Cooksonia has been around during the late Silurian. Now, another cool thing about the time distribution of fossils is that it can provide evidence of evolution of life on Earth. Very simply put, the record could show that life has evolved from simple forms in the past to more complex forms present day. So in the past, which is at the bottom of the chart, life was more relatively simple. And as you get closer to the present, through all these evolutionary changes, life has become more complex. Specifically, Life first started in the ocean, then eventually species were able to evolve and they were able to walk on land and survive breathing on land. Then eventually life was also, be, was also able to evolve where some animals such as birds could fly. So over time you had this evolution of life, all of these changes that were relatively simple in the past to more complex closer to the present. Now fossils can also provide really cool information about changes in sea level in the past. There are some places on, on Earth right now that are just land, but there's evidence that these places that are just land now were once covered by water and therefore had high sea level in the past. We know this because some of these places on land have fish fossils. And the only evidence for that is there must have been a time in the past where that land was covered with water and therefore there was fish over the land with the high sea level and eventually those fish were able to fossilize. And when sea level dropped, the land still contained the evidence of those fish fossils. So another column that we're going to learn about is important geologic events in New York State's history. So if we zoom in a little bit more, there's a variety of different events that have happened in New York that this reference table can cover. The most recent at the top of the chart is the advance and retreat of the last continental ice. So it's talking about the last ice age that New York State experienced. A little bit further down, we had the dome-like uplift of the Adirondack region. So it's talking about the Adirondack Mountains. Later on, it talks about the breakup of Pangaea, the supercontinent that we had on, had on Earth in the past. And then at the bottom of the chart, you have this symbol of mountains representing different what we call orogenies. Orogenies are mountain building events. These are significant events in New York State's history where we had the creation of large mountain ranges. Now another cool part of the reference table is this last column, which talks about the inferred positions of land masses. So if we take a closer look, we need to recognize that our continents have changed position on Earth throughout history. The continents do not just stay in one spot. So this gives you an overview of how those positions have changed all the way back into the past. North America is colored in black for reference. And also we have the equator that I have highlighted in purple in each diagram for reference, just so you can see where North America is located with respect to the equator. If we look at the diagram at the bottom, we'll notice something really cool. Parts of North America used to be below the equator. So not only was North America in a tropical location in the past, Parts of North America were even below the equator in the Southern Hemisphere. So now let's look at some more example questions using the rest of this chart. During which geologic time period did the Akkadian orogeny take place? So the first step is to locate the Akkadian orogeny on page 9. And if we bring that over to the period column, we'll see that this took place during the Devonian period. The next question is which geologic event occurred at the end of the Triassic period? So you locate the Triassic period in the period column on page 8 of the reference table. Remember the top of the Triassic label is when the period ends, so you bring that over to the important geologic events column 
and you'll see that you have two answers that I would accept. You can either say the intrusion of Palisade Sill or Pangea begins to break up. The last example question is, during which geologic time period was most of North America below the equator? So if you look at the last diagram for Earth's land masses, where most of North America was below the equator, you bring that over to the period column and you'll see that this happened during the Ordovician period. So now we're going to use the remainder of this time where I'm going to teach you how to use multiple pages of the reference table just to answer one question. So our first example question that requires multiple pages is, the diagram below represents the placoderm fish Bothriolepis, an index fossil found in New York State. The surface bedrock at which location is most likely to contain this fossil? So ultimately, we're going to end up using page 3 of the reference table because we have all of these city names that we need to examine. But we also need to use pages 8 and 9 because of the Bothriolepis fossil. So let's take a look. Our first step is to locate the Bothriolepis on the bottom of page 8 and 9 to see which letter represents that index fossil. You'll see that that is fossil R. The next step is you have to find fossil R in the time distribution column of the reference table. So you locate fossil R, bring it over to the period column, and you'll see that that represents the Devonian. We need to know the time period because on page 3 of the reference table, all of the map symbols are the geologic time periods. So we need to find the symbol for the Devonian. And then if we go to page uh, three of the reference table and specifically look at the map there, you'll notice that the only city that is found within the symbol for the Devonian is Ithaca. So that's going to be your answer to this question. One more example question for you requires four pages of the reference table rather than three we had for the last example. Fossils of which type of animal would most likely be found in the surface bedrock of the Catskills? So you need to remember that the Catskills is part of the landscape regions found on page two of the reference table. So first step, you need to locate where the Catskills is. Then you need to remember that page two and three of the reference table work together. So the spot where the Catskills is on page two you also need to locate that spot on page three of the reference table, which should be somewhere near Slide Mountain. You look at the map symbol for that region, and you find that map symbol in the key. And once again, we're looking at the Devonian period. So now that we know the time period, we need to now go to pages eight and nine of the reference table to figure out what type of life on Earth existed at this time. So you locate the Devonian, and then you have to look a lot here. You can either look at the life on earth column or you can look at the time distribution of fossils column just to figure out based on all the options within the question what type of life or fossil group or specific fossil existed during the Devonian period. If you look at all of the options through process of elimination, the only type of life that could have existed during the Devonian out of all of these options was the brachiopods.